Hi guys, I'm going to be showing you today how to make your art portfolio. You're going to start with two big pieces of paper that I already stapled together in the corner for you. You're going to get a nice marker and write your full name on the front. So my full name is Denise DeAngelis. You can write your full name nice and big on the front. You can use bubble letters if you'd like. Make it as fancy or as plain as you'd like, but make it big. I also want you to write art. And then please write your grade. And write the year. This is 2015 to 2016. So it should look like this. Next, you're going to be able to make hole punches around three sides. While you're waiting to get hole punchers at your table, you can begin decorating your art portfolio. You can decorate the front and the back, however you'd like, whatever is appropriate for school. You can use markers or crayons um, and any other supplies that are put out at your table. So now the hole punching. You're only going to be doing the hole puncher on three sides, the two short sides and the bottom. We're going to use those holes to help us sew. Here's what a hole puncher is. You've probably used it before, but just a quick lesson on the parts. It has a top jaw that has a tooth, it has a tongue, and it has a bottom jaw that has a little pocket inside for catching all the hole punch circles that get punched out. Make sure when you put the hole puncher inside, when you put the paper inside the hole puncher, you put it in the right place. That means that you wanna put it with the top jaw and the tongue on top of the paper and the bottom jaw that catches all the pieces on the bottom of the paper. Start in the top corner. Push the hole puncher all the way in. If you don't push it in, you'll get a hole on the very edge and that won't be secure enough for your sewing. Push it all the way in and squeeze. If you have to use two hands to squeeze, that's fine. But as you get stronger, you can just use one hand. You'll hear it click and you will get a hole all the way through both pieces of paper. The little bits that you punched out will be left inside there. You don't need to clean those out until you're finished and you can dump them in the trash so it's cleaned out for the next student. As far as spacing the holes along the edges, you wanna give about three fingers of space and then punch your next hole. Three fingers, punch. Three fingers, punch. Three fingers, punch. The reason why we're spacing it like that is because you don't want to have too many holes going down. That will take you way too long to sew. Once you get an idea in your mind of how far apart that is, you can just eyeball it and estimate it. That'll help you move a little faster. And I'm going to hole punch the bottom. Same spacing, about three fingers apart. And then up the other side. and I'm done hole punching. Now I'm ready to sew. You're going to get a big piece of yarn that I have pre-cut for you. If you don't have yarn that's pre-cut, I estimated about three wing spans, which is way more than you need, but it's better to have too much than not enough. You're going to start up in one of the corners by tying a double knot through the hole. If you don't know how to do that, you can ask a friend to help you or the teacher. To do the double knot, it's just like when you tie your shoes. Take the tail, cross it over, loop it under, and pull. Do it again. Take the tail, cross it over, loop it under, and pull. Now you're ready to sew. You need to go find the other end. Whoa, that's a lot of yarn. On this end, just to prevent this from fraying and coming apart, I'm going to tie a knot. That way, I've got a knot to poke up through the holes. That's going to be helpful. We're not going to use sewing needles for this project. We just don't need that. The sewing works like this. It's not an over-under kind of sewing today. We're going to do what we call a whip stitch. It really just wraps around all of the edges to keep them sewn together. So you're gonna take your paper, and I like to tell some of the kids, pretend it's like dirt. And this is like a worm. Well, the worm peeks his head up out of the dirt and he checks to see if it's safe, but it's not because the bird, which is your other hand, swoops down and grabs the worm. Did you see how that worked? The yarn poked 
up out of the hole and then your fingers pulled it out. You can't sew the next stitch until you pull all of this through. You need to keep pulling and pulling and pulling until all of this yarn comes out. It's like the world's longest worm. Once you've got it tight, you're ready for your next stitch. Now some kids like to think it's funny to walk all the way across the room as they pull their yarn or start pulling this around like it's a puppy dog on a leash. Please don't do that. You'll tangle up your friends and it's not safe. So I'm gonna drop this yarn. I've got my tail again, or my worm. I poke it up through the hole. My bird comes along and swoops up that juicy worm. And then I pull and I pull. What I can do is use, keep pinching this with my hand, hold my paper still, and then with this hand, I just keep pulling my yarn until it gets tight. This is my stitch. So far, I've made two stitches in my sewing. I'm going to keep sewing like this until I get all the way to the end.